Good morning! So I made this the night before and I love it. I hand painted it so it would look kind of like the font that I use. And if you go even closer, you can see my little pencil lines. It's very me. Here's where I left off last week. I got most of the first block in done. The main darks and lights. Nothing too particular or accurate yet. I didn't quite get to this area, but I think when I paint it, I'm just gonna go 100% on it. Oh, I might even work on that today. Have you ever got to the second half of a project, piece of work, or even a book you're reading, and felt your energy shift? Your gaze narrows as limits have been set and the small granular efforts begin. It can propel us forward, locking us to our desk for an all-nighter and consume our whole being. It's natural that the further we progress, the smaller our efforts begin to feel amongst it all. This phase can require a lot more check-ins with yourself to see how things are going. Expectations go up and the pressure starts to wear on us. This may sound dramatic in the context of finishing an illustration or sketch, but it's noticeable no matter the scale of work. As I move into stages of refinement in my painting, I have to shift my perspective to account for this change and know that no matter the pace, these slow days are necessary and can even be enjoyable. So how do I stay interested and engaged in a piece after a few weeks? Especially as someone who gets fired up by spontaneity, new things, and exploration. Because this Maria is the same one who started a paint by number in the third grade and set it aside for two years before randomly finishing it. Oh yeah, that's a great color. The number of unfinished ideas and projects in my life are numerous. Simply because when things get slow in a personal project, I used to move on. While shelving things for a while can be necessary, today I'm more concerned with enjoying the simpleness of the second half, where we put our noses down and feel wonder at how capable we are in the face of reality. I'm more afraid to leave my ideas in the air. To not bring them fully into life is the fastest way to lose them forever. Because of this, I can understand and appreciate what is slow when nearing the end of a project. Birds chirping, snacks, going outside, phone calls with my siblings. It all ushers me along from one day to the next. Most of our lives will be lived in phases of long journeys towards something we want. Here and there we live on our success, and rightfully so, but if we carry that sense of awe through every season in between, our joy can be never-ending. We will see struggles, but not get lost in them, at the very least. I like how the buildings are already sitting back in space really nicely, so I think the values are pretty good there. I kind of want to clean up this. We're going to continue to work here a little bit longer. I do have a problem with mixing enough paint at a time though. This is actually a nice color. It looks like green, but it's actually like a gray yellow. Oh, it looks green. Yeah, I think it turned out well. Making art that is meaningful to me has been one of the biggest factors in keeping me going through long projects and fears that what I do is not enough. This piece in particular is important to me because only my family will really know where it's from, but on the other hand, many can relate to the lifestyle, the place, the joy of playing, as my brother does in the image. An unexpected moment of beauty. Something that I really love to capture. Tying our work to our personal experiences can feel unsettling, and admitting who we are leaves us open to others' opinions, but it gives us more of a reason to create. That's not the color I wanted. Knowing what inspires you or sparks your desire to create is useful in developing your art too. It brings a quality to our work that is noticeable and can be more important than the number of finished pieces. I wish I had been told earlier that the quantity of art you make is not always important. It's good to spend as much time on your art as you can, but that doesn't mean the outcome has to look a certain way. The results of your effort doesn't have to be a finished sketchbook or 30 paintings. Granted, in the beginning it can be good to just move through the process many times, but with each new start, we want to get closer to why we are creating and how to put our own joys into the work. 
I am very invested in the idea of process because of my life experiences. Growing up at home, I helped with raising plants for sale, and I learned early that dividing and planting things can be done quickly and yet still require long periods of growth before there were any flowers. And in product design, I was taught the steps to finding strong and innovative solutions. Ideas had to be tested and based on previous work. Both of these lessons have formed a deep belief in me that all the small parts of our work are connected and reliant on each other. So I can see now that no layer of a painting is right on its own. But when they come together in values, movement, or color, they make a whole. It's in the small things and all the small days that big ideas are built and beauty is made. up on the wall. I love it so much. <laughs> wow. These are all the guests at our bonfire. <laughs> Someone has the zoomies. Let's check on my garden. I had some nice flowers last year. Just have to do it again now. These are the fruit trees. There's peach, Cherry, apple somewhere, a bunch of stuff. Vegetable garden. That is the vegetable garden, which will be much prettier later. I'm excited for spring. Yeah. Uh, let me look. I've been waiting all day to go outside. Finally, I did it. Because of him. Highly recommend going outside. We have a lot more to do today. I was thinking last night about the time period it takes for an artist to make a piece of work and how we go through phases where that changes. Right now I'm doing about a painting a month. I just want to say that no matter what pace you're moving at, even if you get a piece done in a year, there's a time and a place for it and it'll have a different impact on your life. I don't think there's any one right or wrong way to pace yourself. But speaking of which, we are on week four with this one. I'm thinking I'll get a lot done today and tomorrow, but I'm still gonna need next week to refine things. I'm happy with where it's at. Made a lot of good progress. Okay, the coffee has been acquired. I'm gonna pretend that I'm productive. <laughs> My mood and energy changes with the weather and my surroundings more than I would like it to. But knowing that ahead of time at least helps in accepting and resolving it. It can be the same when we have to spend time with someone difficult or deal with an annoying task. Those things may seep into our creative time and ruin our relationship with making. We may even blame ourselves for a lack of skill when the cloudy weather is just calling for us to go rest. Sometimes it is good to step away until I have the right energy to bring to the process. Other times, if the work is the one challenging me, it can be best to push through it. Just worked on this area, adding in highlights and some more shadows. This also got neutralized a bit. It's less warm, which makes sense since it's further away. But I think I need to go do something else for a little bit. Working on a bigger canvas is making it hard for me to focus on one area because I just want to fix everything at the same time. Also figuring out how to do some of the details in the back without being too particular. I'm still figuring out how I want it to look. Let's clean some paint brushes while I mentally reset. Sometimes I just have to remind myself the obvious that I have to keep working and it will make progress over time. I can't finish something immediately. That looks good. Okay. 
he's got iron will, unlike me. I'm made of jello. <laughs> What did you say I should keep doing? Oh, now I'm here. I'm gonna work on this and hopefully make it look less like random rectangles and more like a cloud of dust. This was really good. You have anything else for me? Coffee? Oh. The longer we go without paying attention to our feelings, the more things build and cause tiredness or an unexplainable desire to just move on. Quitting a project or continuing when it feels slow can be a matter of simply balancing ourselves out with a mango, a phone call, or journaling. Let's clean this up so we can do something else now. It is mega windy outside and I'm a weather reporter. Good morning. What's up? It's day three of hanging out with me, painting. And I'd like to make progress over here, adding in a little bit of shadow and dimension and adjusting some of this area. I'm not gonna pressure myself to do too much today though. I have been thinking about doing longer content, something you can listen to while you're painting or working. If you have any ideas for that or things you want me to do, let me know. After all, it's not about rushing, but experiencing the process of making and putting ourselves into each layer of our work, no matter what it is. To infuse our small joys, values, and experiences and make it meaningful. It takes time to process this and the work in front of us. I find it challenging to stare at my own paintings as they get closer to being done. Knowing that now I'll have to be honest with what I'm capable of at this time and admit to what I care about. Our fears about these things can come out as frustration with slowness and not seeing what we wanted. But imagine if it took several months to do a project, would you still love that act of making it? If yes, then the timing of when we get it right becomes less important and we can enjoy the slow process. Oh, I almost got black paint on myself. I am ready for another week. Next week, because right now I'm done.